Hi guys and welcome to another video. This video is an updated tutorial on how to install Binhex's Deluge VPN container for all your torrenting downloading needs on your Unraid server. This video has been requested a lot in the comments on the YouTube channel and I also promised Binhex that I'd have the new video out by Sunday and now it's Tuesday. Well, since my last Deluge VPN video, things have changed in how we set up this container. Now, as I've always said, if you're going to download any torrents, it's always best to use a VPN to protect our privacy. Now, I know none of you guys download anything that you shouldn't, but it's best to be safe just in case you download something you shouldn't by accident. And for those of you who think that no one knows what you download, well let's quickly look at how easy it is to see what is downloaded. Let's go to a website called iknowwhatyoudownload.com. So when you first go to the website, it displays any torrents that may have been downloaded from your IP address. And as you can see, for my IP address, there are no torrents that are listed as being downloaded. And I have actually obscured my IP address for obvious reasons. But you can see here, it says we can look at similar IPs as well. So let's look at one of these, and they may well be one of my neighbours. Hmm, and so it seems that this guy's a bit of a Marvel fan. Let's try someone else. Yep, and so they're downloading things too. Now these guys, they may well be getting a letter from their ISP soon, or maybe even worse. So the point I'm trying to make is never download anything unless you're using a VPN. And the great thing for us on Raiders is we have a really awesome container already set up with built-in VPN, built-in Deluge and a built-in Privoxy. So everything we need to keep all of our privacy secure. So let's get this set up. Let's go to our server and let's go to our shares because first we're going to need to make sure we've got a download share created. Let's scroll down and click on to add share and obviously we're going to call it downloads. Now one important thing to do is if you have a cache drive to make sure that used cache is on yes. So what this will mean is when files are downloaded they're first downloaded to the cache drive and then when mover runs they'll be moved across onto the array. So this way it's much less wear on the array and it's by far the best way to set it up. So now click on to add share. OK, so with the share created, now let's just go back onto our desktop. And on our computer, let's browse to that Unraid share. And here's my downloads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three new folders here. The first one, I'm going to call it completed. And the second one, incomplete. And the third one, unzipped underscore torrents. Now we'll use these three folders later on when we set up the preferences in Deluge itself. But for now let's go back to the server. OK, so click on your apps tab. Now if you don't have this tab here then you need to install Squid's excellent community applications. And in the search box just type in Deluge VPN. And then we click on the little hard drive symbol here to install it and that will bring up the template. OK, let's scroll down. Now the first thing we need to actually change is the data path here. This data path is where all of our downloads are actually going to go. And by default it's set inside of our cache drive inside the app data in a folder called data. Now we don't want it to go there, we want it to go to the share that we've just created. So let's click here and browse through to that share and set that as our location. And we want to get that through the user share here and there we are we have downloads. And here we can actually disable the VPN. And with it set to no, the container would start with Deluge, but without the VPN part running at all. So as we want it to go through a VPN, we're going to have this on yes. So next, we need to put in our VPN username and password. Now by default, everything's set for private internet access. But you can see here, we can also use AirVPN, and we can also use custom ones here as well. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use private internet access, because in my opinion, this is the very best one there is. And for those of you who don't actually have private internet access yet, I have got a link in the description for you to be able to sign up. And if you sign up through my link, it doesn't cost you any more, but it does help out the channel and help me out a little bit making these videos. So I'd really appreciate it if you're not a member and you are going to join, that you use my link to do so. And for the sake of this video, I'm just making up a username here. And also we need to put in our password. OK, and like I say, I've got it on private internet access because that's the one I use. But you can use AirVPN here and you put the same, your username and password in here and you can set up custom ones as well. 
Now for container variable options we can leave this one empty as it is. Now we want to use container variable strict port forwarding, we want this to be set for yes. Now this part here where it says enable privoxy, this is a really useful feature. Privoxy will allow us to route other traffic through the VPN as well as just to luge. This is useful if we want to route our browser or other media containers through the VPN as well, but we'll come back to that later. We'll just enable it here for now. Now let's look here at where it has the setting for the variable LAN network. Now a lot of people get confused as to what this is. Basically, all it is is a network range that our home network is on. Many routers, for example, have the IP address of 192.168.1.1. So that IP address would be in the range 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24. It's really just the first three sets of numbers of your IP that you need to worry about. Here, the 192.168.1. The 0 forward slash 24 in simple terms just means from 1 to 254. So 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24 translates into that. Now my router has an IP address of 10.10.20.1 So here I'd set my IP range to be 10.10.20.0 forward slash 24 See, it's really easy But make sure you set it correctly Or else the VPN will not work And as a result Deluge won't start Yeah, these are the various name servers that are going to work through the tunnel So we can leave this as it is, it's set for the open DNS name servers and looking here it's also got the Google name servers in so we can leave that as it is now here we should leave this on false this is just to allow debugging so we can put it on true if we want to allow it it won't stop anything working and now we're coming to the bottom of the template there's a variable here called umask now this is used to set the file permissions for the downloaded files but we can leave it as the default and it will work absolutely fine and the last two things at the bottom these here are just to set which user is running the container and again we can leave these as default so now we can click on apply and pull down the container and once it's downloaded we can click on to done and then let's go back to our docker tab and you'll see if we try and start up the container now we're going to get an error saying that the page cannot be displayed and this is because we need to put our VPN providers open VPN files and certificates into the configuration of Deleuze VPN so let's do that now okay so to do that let's open a web browser and then download private internet accesses open VPN files from the link here and you'll see this link in the description once it's downloaded, let's put it on the desktop and unzip it. Now let's take a look inside. Now as you can see, there's a lot of different endpoints here. These are all the different countries or regions which we can connect through. Now the one I recommend that you use is to go through the Netherlands. So this is the one we want to keep, but we need to delete all of the other ones. Now you may be wondering why I've chosen the Netherlands, and why not the UK or the USA? Well only some of the endpoints support port forwarding, and without port forwarding, Deluge will download torrents extremely slowly. So we need to choose one of the endpoints which support this, and here's a list of the ones that do. Now you notice that I deleted all of the other .ovpn files, but I left these two certificate files here because these are needed as well. So now what I can do is I can copy these files here, what we need to do now is go to our app data folder and then find the bin hex deluge VPN folder and then inside there we'll see this folder here called open VPN so we need to open that and then paste the files into here okay so now we can close this and go back to our docker tab and let's restart deluge VPN now and now when we click on web UI deluge starts absolutely fine so now we need to pop in the password and the default password for Deluge is Deluge and now we can set up the preferences in here. Now if you remember earlier within our downloads folder we made an incomplete and a complete folder. So we want our downloads to start downloading into incomplete then when they're finished we move to the data completed folder. And if you remember here the forward slash data path that was mapped to our downloads and there you can see we have the complete and the incomplete folders within. So we know that's going to work fine. Now I'm going to go down to plugins now and I'm going to enable the extractor, the block list and add label and click apply. 
And now you can see these three extra sections below. So first let's click onto Extractor. And you can see here it wants to extract it to the Incomplete folder. Well I don't want it to extract to there. I want it to extract to a completely different place. I'm going to extract mine to unzip underscore torrents. And I click Apply. And remember this is the third folder that we set up when we created our download share earlier. And now I'm going to go onto the block list. And now for URL, we want to paste this in. This URL is in the description. Then let's paste the URL into here and click Import Block List on Startup and click Apply. Next, let's look at Label. And this plugin can allow us to label various torrents. And so now let's click OK. OK, so now we're ready to test out Deluge with the torrent. So I'm going to download Ubuntu. And I'm using a useful Chrome plugin called Deluge Siphon to download this torrent directly into Deluge. And this is about the maximum speed I can get out of my connection. So while this is downloading, let's have a look at our shares again. And if we look in our incomplete folder, we can see that this is downloading here. Now remember when we set up our download share, we set it to use the cache disk. So remember all the downloads are going to be going to my SSD cache drive and so my array is not going to be spinning up. And it's only when Mover runs later on tonight when these files are going to be moved over onto the array. So there's no unnecessary wear put on the array. This is exactly what the cache drive is designed for. OK, so now Ubuntu's finished and it's seeding. OK, so that's Deluge up and running. Now there's one more thing that we can use Deluge VPN for. And I'm just going to go back to the template just to discuss this. And that's using Privoxy. Now so long as we've got this enabled here, what it means is that we can route other traffic through the VPN. So this means we can route other containers such as Radar, Sonar, SickBeard through the VPN as well. So when they're doing their searches on the indexing site, that's all through the VPN. So it keeps the whole process private. So as well as containers, we can also put our web browsing through the VPN by pointing our browser to the Privoxy. And if you want to know how to do that, then please see my video, How to Use Privoxy. So, that brings us to the end of another video. I hope you guys found it useful, and if you did then please hit the like button and share it with anyone else you think may be interested. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you in the next video.